Hey everyone, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about this idea of crossing the abyss. So this is going to vary for everybody and I'll give a little bit of a history about um, what my thoughts are on it and what some of these, what in terms of a map, I just will talk about that a little bit. So, and, and, a, and a model in terms of how to think about it and ways one would go about it if one tried to. So the only, so let me give it some history before I get into the topic itself. So for me, I have been doing magic since I was 19, but I would say I only really tried to upskill my magic around 2017. Um, although to be fair, I probably had done some spells uh, quite a few spells um, going back probably well off and on you know from I probably had a 10-year stint where I wasn't doing that much except just regular lesser banishing rituals and maybe some middle pillar I do highly recommend the middle pillar um, but try to balance that out with everything else you're learning and being grounded um, that would probably be, I would say, on top of um, maybe do it twice a week, I would say might be a good, you know, way to go about it. It my, What I found is that it does tend to, like, get you, like, really up there in terms of, like, feeling very lightheaded. So that's what I found for me. So how often do you want to do that? Mm, I don't know. So that's up to you. Um, but anyway, that's about all I would do. I was pretty tentative. I would do occasionally try something else. I think I tried the Goetia a couple of times. I didn't find it was as helpful for me. So I just wanted to be as forthright as I can. And um, nowadays Goetia really isn't, <laughs> it's not something that I do. Some people have found a success with it. That's fine. You know, I just can't, I can't say I recommend it just based on um, my experience. Although, you know, arguably uh, the time that I worked with uh, Ouroboss, um, it wound up being, making me less tempted to work with that uh, system in general because, not because he failed, but because he succeeded, because I said, I don't want to be tempted. <laughs> so, hey, it works. So anyway. Um, I did want to mention, but getting back to that, so I was pretty tentative. And then what happened in 2017 was that my mother-in-law was diagnosed with cancer for a second time, and it ultimately uh, took her life. But when I saw that, I said, okay, I really need to get my act together. I need to get back into this. Now, I had done some Enochian work in 2014, so we're really talking about a good 10 last 10 years and then probably the good 10 or 15 years before that I'd been tr slowly trying to get more stuff incorporated so obviously I didn't I was not without experimenting it was just not something that was a 24 7 thing but when she was sick I realized okay I really you know I need to like start taking this more seriously I need to like you know what's that phrase YOLO you only live once so I'm like, I need to go ahead and do my best. I need to like think about, okay, what am I, what am I going to do with my life? Maybe I ought to get serious about these magical tasks. And I keep bear in mind that I'm more or less a solo practitioner. I do interact with a lot of, of fellow magicians, but just given my life circumstances, uh, doing group magical work is not something that I've had as much opportunity to do. And that's okay, you know, so pretty much I have not done rituals with other people. I have thought about it, <laughs> but um, maybe I need to learn to let go and do that, right? Hmm. You know, so, so anyway, so reflecting on that for a second, I thought, okay, well, let me, let me start taking this more seriously. So I did my Holy Guardian Angel work. That was successful after, you know, a few you know, one might call rookie mistakes, but I really wanted to keep going. I didn't want that to be the end all be all. And I knew that Enochian, according to Crowley, at least, Alistair Crowley, 
uh, was one of the ways that you could meet your holy guardian angel. Now, what's his map? Was that all okay? I don't know. You know, I'm not going to speak to that. But what I can say is that it got me the whole concept of using that to go even farther and maybe do this other magical task, which is crossing the abyss, that all of a sudden made me realize, okay, maybe that's something I ought to also do. So I went, went for it. And I was experimenting with other stuff at the time, but I decided to slowly just focus in on the Enochian and scry all of the Aethers. And I had some help, you know, through some classes that I took, uh, multiple classes on Enochian, and I really found it pretty helpful. And eventually I did actually get through all 30 Aethers in about, I want to say, May of 2019. So it's been five years now, more than five years since I finished scrying all 30 of the Aethers. And uh, I did the bottom-up approach. Some people say do top-down, that's fine. But that was the step that I took. And I have to say that it was pretty interesting. So now some people have associated crossing the abyss with scrying of the 30 Aethers. I can say that the answer is yes, sort of, with some qualifications. Now, I'm not in a lodge. I'm not part of an initiatory magical system. I'm just sort of me who's learned from a lot of people who are a lot smarter than I am. Um, but what I can say is that the idea of crossing the abyss, what is that? The idea is that you are letting go of the normal everyday waking consciousness and you are fundamentally being changed by understanding the nature of reality. Now, to some extent, you already get that if you're into magic and you're having magical experiences. The way I was explaining it to my friend is that um, you, for me, it's very sensorial. I sense it. I sense things that are happening um, in a previous video or another video I'm going to upload right before this. Uh, I talk about how I did the, um, did one of the PGM rituals and during parts of that, and as I'm vibrating this bar these barbarous words, I'm finding myself, oh, okay, oh, oh, you know, I'm, 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 I can hear it. I can hear the vibrations being more than just the vibration of my voice. Um, and I know the difference between that and overtones, for example. So if you're wondering about that, you know, I've been in all state choir. I know what that is. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying, you know, I, I can tell, I, you know, I've been trained to listen, blah, blah, blah. So I know the difference, you know, like I say, and, and, you know, and I was just trained really well. It's the only reason I think that I got into all state choir. I was, I was very lucky also, because I didn't make it on my own the first time I got in as an alternate. <laughs> okay, so just please. So, um, one second. Okay, so what is crossing the abyss? It is a, and I've talked about this when I talk about scrying the aethers, but suffice it to say, it's that under, it's, it's the original meaning of red pilling. Okay. <laughs> Forget the whole QAnon stuff. Just watch the movie. Okay. Watch the matrix. You know, you'll get the whole idea. The, if you watch the matrix, what you realize is it's not about a con political conspiracy, although, you know, you can extrapolate to that. It's about realizing that this physical reality right here is not what you think it is. <laughs> okay. This is not it. You know, it's that there is this whole other layer of reality that you cannot see directly, hear directly, blah, 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 unless you are like going through these mind expanding experiences. And that is some people have them because they might see a UAP, which is the new term for a UFO. Some people might um, see, you know, you know, a vision in the sky of Mary some people might, um, whatever it is, your world has changed, your world has shifted, and you realize, okay, whatever story I have is not the story I get. Now, is that crossing the abyss? Not quite, right? That is a start on a path that might lead you to that. So, so what is it? 
Well, ultimately, you might hear Buddhists or people who are very profound meditators have these very integrated experiences where everything is one. You know, they realize my consciousness is related to absolutely everything else in the universe. That's getting very close. So my description of it, such as it is, I'm just one person, other people might describe it differently, is that we are basically all, we are all one consciousness, but we are sort of blinded by that fact by our, by the nature of what it means to be alive. And we, it's what I call like the part whole problem. So what do I mean by part whole, W-H-O-L-E? Um, we are just a part of the whole. And so we don't have the experience of the whole of creation. We have only experience of our part. And so does, for example, you know, if you, let's say, take a look at, you know, uh, a part in an iPhone, let's say, does that part understand that it's part of this massively complex system that is being used to help connect one person to another, you know? Does the cog in a car understand that it's serving a much larger purpose to help one person go from A to B, point A to point B? No, <laughs> not necessarily, right? But if you show it the whole thing, it's like, oh, okay. Right, it's like when Neo is waking up and he is being shown that, or he's being woken up, he's being shown, okay, you know, this is what the Matrix is like. You're part of this whole system, but really if you step out of it, you realize there's this whole that is really connecting everybody, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you don't want to like say, oh, you know, you'd rather just continue, I am Mr. So-and-so who is doing such and such, or I am Ms. So-and-so who's doing such and such, or whatever honorific you want to give somebody who's non-binary. I'm not sure. I'm not up on that whole thing because, you know, reasons. But I'm very respectful and I really want to address people the way they are. So, you know, all of that. But somebody, you know, who, you know, there are different pronouns, all of that being said. So, and I'm not... I, I'm definitely very respectful of all of that, as best I can be. Um, you know, I pretty much try to take each person as they come, so I do want to mention that. And, you know, respect them the way that they want to be respected. That's what I try to do. Okay. So, um, so if, there's some, if there's a way you'd prefer to be addressed, then I will go ahead and do that. Anyway, that's a little off topic in terms of what I wanted to mention, but I should mention that because the creators of The Matrix are trans. So anyway, so the, Wach the Wachowskis or the Wachowski sisters, um, they made a really great movie and I do recommend watching that instead of, you know, the, the conspiratorial folks. Because <laughs> um, really what they're talking about is a conspiracy of, um, of narrative of who we think we are. So what Crossing the Abyss does is it strips away that narrative and gives you the beginning of, of shifting you out of that. Now, you still have to like sort of come back into regular consciousness, just like Neo has to go back into the Matrix in the later movies to do what he does to liberate people. And what I've found is that um, doing that is, it's a little hard because you are changed. It's like you need to come back in and then, what's that phrase? After the ecstasy, the laundry. I believe that's a book title by a Buddhist. Um, so you need to look, figure out how to do that. How do you get back into regular, con oh, okay, you know. And are you playing pretend? A little bit, you know. <laughs> You're a little, okay, I'm going to pretend that. What was, I think Bill Hicks had a, a great speech about blah, 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 you know, consciousness, are, you know, we're all part of one, and now here's Bill, Tom with the weather, or something like that, right? Um, so, so you, but yeah, you have to kind of go back into everyday consciousness. Um, now, does that mean that everything you just had was a lie? <laughs> <laughs> right? Were you were you red pilled on the red? Were you blue pilled when you thought you took a red pill? No. Um, the truth is, is that you you do the exact same steps, 
you know, specifically it's often associated with, with successfully scrying the aether of zips such that you don't have, such that it, it, it's, um, you're not locked out of part of that experience. And what I found is that I can tell when I was not getting the full experience. I did scry the aethers, but if I found myself getting locked out, I'd be like, hmm, what else can I do to, to do this and that? So when I've since rescried the aethers, you know, that I felt like I was getting locked out of, I would do certain steps that I would ask of the angels in that aether, and then I would be okay. One second while I wet my whistle here. So again, just to recap, crossing the abyss means you are getting stripped away of nonsense narratives about yourself, about what your life is about, about what your consciousness is, and it's really about instead, once that is done, integrating you with the larger reality that you are a part of, the larger reality of consciousness, awareness, and the heart. Okay, at least that's my experience. And so, and I think that's very important. And getting to the heart is, if you watch some of the later Matrix movies, that's really where everything, I, I can't recommend the last one. <laughs> I forget if it's Matrix Resurrections, I can't really recommend it. But you see what they're trying to portray is Neo's heart becoming more and more open and him being true to it. And so... Um, that's exactly what I found that you have to do. You have to be true to that um, in general in life, in my opinion. Um, other, you know, now it, are there lots of steps along the way? Yeah, but and that's okay. That's normal. It's to be expected that you okay. It's not just you know I'm gonna you know suddenly be open hearted. You also have to be intelligent too. But ultimately, that is the goal: is to be very. Um, very authentic and very open-hearted um, so that you can, because that way you're not denying yourself uh, a lot of the, the richness and happiness and the fullness of your humanity. That's just my take though, I could be wrong. So anyway, I just wanted to mention all of that so that um, now does this sound a little you know, a mix of woo, but also trite. <laughs> sure, I'm sure it does. But, you know, that's not really my job is my my job isn't to well, I mean, what's my job, right? <laughs> I'm just doing this as a hobby. So it's not even job, man. Um, anyway, so that's my take on what crossing the abyss is. If you're somebody who's into like the OTO or the AA, they may say, okay, it's got to be like this, that, and the other thing. But oftentimes the same, uh, that, they will often equate it with, um, as far as I can tell anyway, is being, is successfully scrying the Aethers all the way up through Zip, they may say. And also, uh, but also I would say that Eastern techniques are equally valid for that. And oftentimes when you are getting into those techniques, um, especially when you're getting into Buddhist, you know, clear light meditation, you're getting beyond even, you know, the, the abyss from the lower sephirot in the tree of life in, into the supernals. You're not only doing that, you're getting almost out of the tree of life itself and into the realm of Adam Kadmon and into specifically that realm of Ein Sof Aur, which is to say limitless light. You can do that with Enochian, by the way. Do you have a full experience or not? Well, you kind of have to do a decent job asking yourself that when you're done. But you can use, you can substitute, and I have this technique on my website, the phrase measureless light, which is Mayophas Yalpirt, and get the same, get, get, a, get a very similar-ish uh, vibe, but I do recommend actually getting into meditation practices as well, so you can see these things from different angles. I think it's um, it's useful to. I had to take a, a statistics class a couple of times when I was in grad school, because when I went from one school to another, they had me retake that, and I say, okay, whatever. But it was interesting being taught the exact same thing, and it was taught very differently, but it definitely came to the exact same kind of tests. 
uh, that you do stati statistically to make sure whatever hypothesis be is being tested correctly. So that was, it was rich and rewarding and, you know, I would have to still probably have to brush up on my stats again if I wanted to do that. But all of that is to say that you get a deeper appreciation for what it is that you're learning if you um, are trying to understand it from different perspectives. And you can pull in skills that you may get here that you don't get here and vice versa. All right, so that's what Crossing the Abyss is, undoing nonsense medita uh, narratives and then getting yourself into integrated into uh, a more rich and realistic sense of what uh, your consciousness and your heart and mind are all about. So if you have any questions or want to share your experiences, I'm happy to uh, listen, read them, reflect on them, give feedback if I have time. But, and I usually do reply to the comments pretty quickly. But anyway, uh, as far as updates go, I don't have too much. I do have all of the names for the updated SDA, but I just haven't written them up yet. So that's okay. <laughs> One thing at a time. Um, it's going to take a little while just because I'm a little slow when it comes to the graphics department. So anyway, um, much love to you all, and I will talk to you later. Okay, bye.